PDIC 2019, welcome ladies and gentlemen, we've just been here with Max Silver at the big lunch with approximately 50 analysts and it was again, yeah, fantastic event and we want to talk now with George Paspalas, the CEO, to give us an update. George, welcome. Thank you, Jochen. Yeah. Good to see you again. Great to see you again. Really, it's one year ago when we were talking about and I would say, again, after the presentation, companies full on track, everything is really running totally well and I even thought that uh, now you really want to plan to go in production on the second half of 2020. So what was in the last year the most important development uh, in the company for you? Oh gosh, uh, there's a few most important. Uh, obviously, I think um, working with our partner Fresneo, uh, the, the underground access to the mineralization has continued to go well. Uh, we're in that mineralized area now. Uh, we're developing all the infrastructure underground. Um, yeah, we're doing some good things on surface. And I, I think the most important thing really in the short term that's happened in the last year is you know, public recognition now by both partners, you know, MAG and Fresneo, that the project's going into the last stage of construction, uh -huh. the uh, surface facility, the process plant, and that we're going to start up in the second half of 2020. Uh -huh. So that's great because, you know, we've been working on this for a number of years. Uh, we've had great exploration success at depth at Val de Canes, which timely, from a time sense, was great opportunity for us because it enabled us to upsize the project for a very small increment of capital uh -huh but realise a far greater output. So extraordinarily high value uh, just by virtue of the timing of our discovery of that deeper zone. So that's a long answer to your question. I think the, the moving forward with the surface construction and bringing the project into production for second half of 2020 is probably the most significant um, issue of the last year. But I shouldn't diminish our... Uh, press releases of today, right? Two press releases. They talk Absolutely. about uh, two discoveries yeah. uh, within where we've been drilling. Yeah. And to, to, to myself and Peter, our um, chief exploration officer, I think that's very significant for the longer term. Um, this is certainly a long life asset. It's going to be probably generational in terms of its mine life. Yeah. And what we've shown is just in the course here of the last four or five years, uh, we're only just scratching the surface from an exploration perspective now. And you know, we've stopped calling it the Val de Canes vein. It's a vein swarm now, mm -hmm. right? We, we have four or five mineralized structures down there. We believe we'll probably find more. Well, and then we it. find these north-south structures. Uh, uh. First time ever in 500 years of mining of silver in this area, uh -huh. we now have a different orientation on the structure, which both our partner and us are both very excited about. I believe that. Well, I'm excited too. Yeah, honestly. well, you should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks really outstanding to me. And I remember we were talking last year, like, you know, when you presented again, fantastic drill results. And I said, hmm, you have a mine below the mine. After seeing this this year, I must say, I have the feeling you have a third mine. Well, yeah. It, the, it's a, the gift keeps on giving. Yeah. So we do have that deeper zone now, which is the mine below mm -hmm. the mine. But now we have veins to the side. Mm -hmm. So maybe your third mine is we have a mine next to the mine. Yeah. And then we have this structure running from the north down to the yeah. south, yeah. which hopefully will intersect a number of these east-west general red lines you see on our presentation um, that means that as we go north-south instead of developing 800 meters a kilometer in rock we're going to develop in rock that's mineralized and it'll pay for it mm -hmm. so it's uh, there's many mines within this mine in the end, I believe. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing the uh, development, you can extract the rock and store it already, and then you can uh, yeah, process it, right? Correct. So, so it pays for itself. Yeah, because you, you will develop yeah. along the mineralized material. Yeah. And so it's paying for the development. Wow, fantastic. And if the grade's good <laughs> enough, it'll actually pay yeah. for a lot of things. That's great. Um, so has anything um, changed, I would say, technical-wise or capacity-wise, or also AISC-wise, um, when you say second half 2020, you go in production? Yeah, the, the metrics don't change on the project. And uh, 
what changes is as we find more of these veins within the swarm, mm -hmm. they're, they're very high value. Right? We talk about the anticipata vein now. It's growing in size significantly. It's 30 to 80 metres away from the deep zone. So it's like one month's development and we're, yeah, we're into a new mining area. Uh, remember, all the infrastructure above mm -hmm. is paid off by the Bonanza Zone. Absolutely. And so from a AISC and, and a, an economic point of view, mm -hmm. it's extraordinarily high value material we're finding mm -hmm. because it's right where we are mining and where we've paid off all of the overhead of the infrastructure. Yeah. And what capacity do you put mined in per day? Well, currently the nameplate's 4,000 mm -hmm. and, you know, That could go maybe can, a little bit higher. Look, Fresneo have a... Fresneo are good operators, and they've had a long history mm -hmm. of always overperforming in terms of nameplate throughput. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we we certainly hope we're going to get more than four. But you know, let's walk before we run, uh, get it built, get it up at four, mm -hmm. and then we'll see where that goes to. Okay, super. Let's talk about some numbers. Um, you have 142 million US dollars in the treasury. That's enough. Yep. To really get you there? As far as we see the capital estimates now, that's, that's pretty close to what we need. You know, I, again, I go, I go to our partner and their ability. You know, they're, they're developing, um, they're, they're, their, their development cost per meter is less than what's in our study. The equipment purchases that we're starting to make, there's savings there. Um, You know, Fresneo are, are very good at negotiating construction mm -hmm. contracts um, with subcontractors, and we expect to see uh, improvements, lower actual cost than the study. So, mm -hmm. you know, we think we can get to where to the end with what we have. Um, the next nine months will give us a greater greater insight into that, and um, and if we happen to need a little bit more capital. Mm -hmm. Well, Look, that's we're, no problem. We're, yeah, well, and we're you know, nine months from production. Yeah. But if you're There's a lot of different anyway, facilities. Right? Yeah, and okay. we have an extraordinarily yeah. robust yeah. share yeah. structure. That's right. But, you know, we this this project generates immense cash flow. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So a small debt at the end and whatever. It's yeah. Yeah, financing. Yeah. If we need any financing, it's not really an issue for us. Yeah. What I find also really astonishing is to have no debt on the balance sheet. That means you cannot be pressurized. You no. have no bank behind you who is always saying, you must do that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, so even if you have a hiccup, you have a little bit of a yeah, breeze, I would call it. Right. But let's assume everything goes the, the nice way and five dollar and two cents you have uh, AISC if I'm correct yeah? right. from yep. the last um, yep. feasibility. So we talk about easily a ten dollar pre-tax margin, mm -hmm. right? Is there a chance to pay dividends quite soon? Well, you know, you always have to be careful committing to that, but um, we have loyal, good shareholders. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I believe they deserve a drink mm -hmm. at some point in time. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we have a <coughs> ever-expanding resource base. Mm -hmm. right? And so the dividend comes down to, at a point in the future, what are the capital requirements mm -hmm. and what makes sense. Mm -hmm. But certainly there's an element in the way I think about the future that our shareholders should be rewarded. Mm -hmm. We just have to see what the capital de deployment of the asset is mm -hmm. because if the geological success continues mm -hmm. and this resource continues to grow the way it's growing, yeah. it may be more prudent in the medium term to reinvest in the property. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, certainly, uh, dividend paying to our good, loyal shareholders is something that's at mm -hmm. the front of my mind. So, very good. Uh, pleased to hear that because I'm a shareholder. Oh, too. yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah, last question. Um, oh, just something came to my mind here. Yeah, dividends we had, um, payouts we had, that's all fine. Um, Yeah, from the, let's say from the growth perspective, could you imagine to say, okay, let's assume first mine, second mine, then we have the third mine below. Could you assume to say in a standpoint, oh, maybe we want to double because the silver prices are really going up? Is that something which is possible? It is possible. And, um, you know, it's, it's happened on the same vein mm -hmm. uh, at Sacedo with Fresneo, right? They've, um, they built 
an initial 3,000 tonne per day plant and then they build a second. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they're getting close to nine out of those two plants. Uh, you know, th this story could go that way. Yeah. Um, but again... Because um, you have to material, right? Well, that's... Yeah, I it's for sure, yeah. right? But Fresnia are a prudent, experienced mm. mining company and they do things in logical, methodical steps. Mm -hmm. We're also like that, right? We're, we're very disciplined in the way we issue equity. Mm -hmm. We're disciplined in the way we spend money. Yep. Um, so, you know, I don't think, I think things will take their time and they'll be done after careful evaluation yeah. and uh, walk before you run. Let's just, let's just get this first one built. Yeah. Let's get it running well. Let's see what the upside is in the first plant. Yeah. The resource will be there. It's only a matter of drilling it to make it grow. That's we've, right. we've proven that over the last yeah. two years. Yeah. Maybe last statement. Um, what do you think on the silver market itself? Because I found something yeah, really interesting out that all the textile groups, the big textile chains, they start to put RFID chips mm -hmm. into every closing. Mm. And we both know RFID is steamed silver, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. That could be a multi-million ounce yeah. demand. Plus the solar. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that? Electronics in general, right? Uh, everyone wants smaller electronics. Um, silver is one of the best conductors out there. It's used a lot, particularly in the microelectronics and nanotechnology. You've now got this with the clothing. I think the demand for silver as a commodity is ever increasing. Um, you know, a lot of silver is produced as byproducts, mm -hmm. particularly from zinc mines. A lot of those have shut down. Um, I think the future for the silver price is, is, is quite bullish. Yeah. Um, and I just, the higher it is, the better for us. Definitely. But, but I also have a line where it doesn't really matter what, it does matter, but yeah. we don't worry too much about what the silver price will be. We can't control it. Mm -hmm. I but mean, with your cost structure, you must not worry. At, eight, at an eight dollar silver price, and I don't think silver is going to eight at all. No. We have a fifteen percent after tax IRR, yeah, yeah. so we want the silver price to be as high as possible. Yeah. My personal view is I'm bullish on the price of silver, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, we make silver at almost we make money at almost any silver price. That's right. Super, George. Great final statement. Thank you no very much. Thank you. I would say keep it going. We want to see you in the second half, twenty twenty, definitely in production. Yeah. And don't forget the dividends. Yeah, I know. It's there. The shareholders deserve. It. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jorgen. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was George Paspalas, the CEO of Max Silver, and you heard it. Everything is really full on track, and it looks like they have now a third mine found also after those uh, fantastic uh, drill results today. And uh, I would say enough money in the bank, they can really fulfill all their work, all their commitments and we want to see them in production exactly that's what we want to have and of course dividends so thanks for watching us bye bye from toronto